When it comes to the Android game, HTC and Samsung are often the two that are mentioned most frequently, but LG is a contender and they're back in the game with the high-end LG G2. The power button's on the back, the volume rocker's on the back, and in a lot of ways, this competes with the HTC One and the Galaxy S4, and in some ways, performs even better. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com. It's part one of the LG G2 full video review. Let's go see how this compares and how it's better in part one. When it comes to Android, the talk of the town is often the HTC One, the Samsung Galaxy S4, and now the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, but in a ton of ways, LG is back in the game in a big way here, and they're back in the game on the four nationwide US wireless carriers. This is the LG G2, and spec-wise, this thing is decked out, packed to the gills, full of specifications, and as always, it's going to depend on the form factor that's most important to you and the ecosystem you like. But what I will say is after working with this device for several days, and after doing a 30-day challenge, or starting a 30-day challenge with this, I can say that this thing goes head-to-head -head against the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, and even the Galaxy Note 3, and in a lot of ways, beats all three of those devices. There are definitely pros and cons to both. Let's dive in to the LG G2 full video review and see what this thing does well and what this thing does not so well. Before I get too, uh, too far into the video, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the G2. We give these to you for free on the site, so go play the game at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get your G2, they'll help you find the best carrier for you. It's called unbiased carrier searching. Best Buy Mobile, you walk in, they're not paid on commission, they'll help you find what works best for you. So if it's in your area, maybe Verizon or AT&T or Sprint or even T-Mobile, they'll hook you up at Best Buy Mobile. So the G2, quick spec run down here, the G2 has a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU, so one of the first US devices to launch with the Snapdragon 800 CPU as opposed to the 600 CPU. 5.2 inch 1080p HD display here, 1080 by 1920 pixels, and 5.2 inches if, if you recall back to the LG event. LG said that's the maximum based on their research. You can go and still make it a one-handed device. And true to form, I do have big hands and big fingers, but that said, I can still travel for the most part across the display here without too much reach. LG says anything more than 5.2 inches and it's too big. Power button and the volume rocker are also on the back. We'll talk more about that in the overall design part of the video here in just a bit, but continuing along with the specs, you've got a 13 megapixel camera here with optical image stabilization and 1080p HD video recording capabilities, two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage on this device, 16 or 32 gigabyte options, I should say. This one, I believe, has 16 on this unit. 4.2.2 is what's running Android-wise with LG's user interface, a so Jelly Bean, and then LG's UI running atop that, and then otherwise a 3000 milliamp hour non-removable lithium ion battery. So I can see, or I have lithium polymer battery, excuse me. Also, interestingly enough, I have the Korean version of this as well. It has a smaller battery, 2610 milliamp hours, but it is removable. This plate comes off the back, as does this one, but as you can see when I pull this one off, it does not have the battery option. It's just for those covers that you can buy in the stores, and it's often hard to remove, so I'm not even gonna try removing the back cover on this device. But the Korean version, slightly smaller battery, so there are some minor cosmetic differences and some minor differences to the overall specifications. But into the software, this is running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, very fast all around, and the LG user interface we see on top of this device is very similar to what we saw in the Optimus G Pro. So overall usability, very similar. What you will notice on screen buttons here, back, home, and then recent applications. And one of my favorite things, which I have it turned on right now because I find it useful, the double tap to turn the screen on and off. I can knock, knock, and you'll see it powers up right there. That light comes on to show me that it's powering up. I've got my lock screen here. I can swipe from side to side if I want to to access my widgets as part of Android 4.2. Add the widgets. I can go straight into the camera right there, or I can bring this back up and unlock. So you can see just in my movement with this device, it's incredibly fast all around. The processor is nice and fast. The two gigabytes of RAM certainly helps. And then of course, Android 4.2 and LG's definitely honed in on their user interface and made it a far better experience. So from the notifications area, you can see here, quick shortcuts, very similar to Samsung's TouchWiz. But what I like about this is you can customize these as you can on the Galaxy S4. But that was a recent development for Samsung. LG has had this for some time. So for me, for example, I use airplane mode on a regular basis because I live on airplanes for work. So I'll bring this up to the very top and say, you know what, airplane mode is most important to me. Bring that up there. You know, quick memo, I don't really use it that often. Q slide, but you get my point here. Quick remote I use, sound profile, data enabled. You know, I always have my data enabled, so I don't really need to turn it on and off. And I can go back and you can see that those are gone. Airplane mode is now on the far left. And then all these other applications or these other quick widgets that I have 
and I chose to keep are still there at the top of the device. Now, Q-Slide is LG's kind of version of multitasking, if you will, and you can turn this on if you want to and access your Q-Slide applications from the notifications area. I prefer to keep this turned off because I think it takes up too much space, but you can do that. And then down here you have your setting for your brightness, you got your sound settings. The biggest challenge I find, just in personally speaking, in using this device, I often want to hit this little button here for settings when in reality this is my setting button to go into actual Android settings. I am forever hitting this and it turns on my sound settings and I have to wait for that to go away and come back down. So one of those minor kind of click it on a regular basis things, something I've found over a couple of days of using this device. But you got Android 4.2 here and you can see it's tabbed out. You got network sound display in general, so I can go into sound for example. Got all the typical stuff here, sound profile, volumes, vibrate strength. I've got quiet mode, I've got phone ringtones, and of course because it's on silent, I have access to those, so let's go ahead and crank these back up so you can see here. Vibrate strength, can change that. Got my phone ringtone here. Smart ringtone, incoming call, I've got gentle vibration. So you've got a lot of different options here in the settings, both on the sound front and on the display front. I can change, this is one of my personal favorites, I can change the buttons, the customizable buttons down here at the bottom. So let's say I'm used to perhaps a Samsung or an HTC device where historically the Android menu button's been on the right, or the left side rather. I can change them around just like that and do that real time. If I want to add a Q slide option, I can add that and easily access, or my notifications bar rather, and quickly add that. My Q slide option or my quick memo option, I can add that if I want to. I can move these around in any way I see fit. Not only that, but I can change the theme as well. White, white gradation, black, black gradations. I can change the buttons to black if I want to, and I can use a transparent background if I want to also in the home screen. So when I turn that off, obviously it would stay white all throughout. So that's a pretty cool little feature right there. You've got a ton of different settings options here. You've got some themes and more home screen and lock screen. So a lot of stuff we've seen from like the LG Optimus G Pro, for example. I'm going to theme here and I've got basic and marshmallows theme, or a marshmallow theme rather, which is pretty cute and cartoon-like. Kind of a cool little theme there, if that's something that tickles your fancy. I've got live wallpapers and of course my wallpaper gallery and here I have my screen swipe effect as well. So accordion, got breeze, we've talked about these extensively on the LG Optimus G Pro but that continues over onto the LG G2. Allow home screen looping, portrait view only, all the stuff that you would expect and then of course lock screen as well. I can come here and select my wallpaper, I can do a screen swipe effect. I had it as dew drop as you could have seen when I unlocked it, my weather animation, screen lock, owner info, shortcuts as well. So if I want to put in Gmail, for example, I want to put in Google Plus, I can do that and all those shortcuts will show up on the lock screen when I unlock it. So you can see right there, go ahead and unlock it and then there's that dew drop effect that I told you about. So you got that in the lock screen, you got your front touch buttons like I talked about, screen off effect, this is kind of cool, fade out, black hole, retro TV, a couple of different options when you power the device off. I think that's kind of cool. I happen to like fade out. I think it's probably one of the more unique ones, and I believe that's the one that comes on it out of the box, or comes preloaded out of the box. Smart screen and smart video, very similar again here to what we've seen on TouchWiz. You've got smart screen where you can stay on, or the screen will stay on rather when the phone detects a face, so it won't turn off. Smart video, video pauses when it can't detect my face, so when I look away. And then of course the notification LED as well, which will light up when I get a call, a message, and I can turn these on and off as I see fit. Now, cool little feature here, the notification light as you saw a second ago when I powered it off, and turn the screen back on, you can see it's right there. There's also one back on the power button, which you just saw as well. And continuing on that conversation of overall design, very sparse on the sides, nothing a whole, or not a whole lot on the spine here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and micro USB charging port at the bottom. You've got your micro SIM card slot over here on the side, and I should point out this is the global variant as well. Expect some minor differences when the carriers in the States get this device. I know that Verizon's is pretty substantially different in terms of overall look. The camera and the buttons back here look a little bit different on the Verizon unit. It looks like the AT&T version and the Sprint version are pretty close to stock. We'll see how those look when they launch on their respective websites and in the stores. But you know what? A lot of people have asked me, I actually get this question all the time on Twitter. Two things. One, what's the power and volume rocker, uh, rocker buttons like having them on the back? And two, do they press when you're in the pockets or when the phone is in the pockets rather? Two questions, two responses. So I'll tell you one thing. I love having the power button back here. It's very natural versus having it like this and having to reach over really uncomfortably to try and touch it right there. Really enjoy having it right here. It's where my finger naturally rests. So I find it incredibly useful. And the volume rocker buttons as well. And continuing on that trend, pressing and holding the volume down button activates the camera. Pressing and holding when the power of the phone is turned off activates quick memo. So a couple of different shortcuts there, but of course your power button with a notification light. So when the phone is face down, you've got that 
to let you know when you got a missed call or a message. And then of course, power button on the back. I really find it useful. I like it a lot on this device. And again, my finger naturally rests there. So it's a natural kind of inclination to come back here and press it like that. And even if you don't like pressing the power button on the back, all you have to do is double tap and you can turn the screen on. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk more about software, a little bit more about hardware as well. And we'll round it out with some speed tests to determine if this is the device for you. Stay tuned for part two on PhoneDog.com.